Hi guys, uh, this is just a short video just to go through the Shear Force Laboratory. Uh, so what we have here is the Shear Force uh, device. Um, what it does is it takes a beam, um, the beam is to cut into uh, two sections um, and then a, a setup, mechanical setup is used to support both the bending moment and the shear force. Um, on this device there is a spring gauge. Um, the spring gauge here is used to both support the shear force and also to measure the amount of shear force um, off this uh, gauge here at the moment. Okay, um, so the first step in doing this experiment is to check that the device is level. Um, so uh, this has previously been done, but on the front and on the backs of the, um, our device here, we have um, adjustment knobs, which are used to um, lift up uh, little foot supports in the front and in the back of the shear force uh, device. Our second step is to check that the distance between the right hand support and the left hand support is exactly 0 0.9 meters. So this is to match the data which is in your lab sheet um, at the moment. So we can take a ruler, measure between the pins at these two points using our ruler and we get uh, 90 centimeters. Um, the next step is to, uh, to check that um, the cut in our beam is the same as the value which is in our lab sheet. At the moment this is set to be 0 0.3 uh, meters away from the left hand end. So we take our ruler, um, we see a gap in the center of our component and as I see that I need to move this a little bit to the right so I take the beam and I shift the whole assembly towards the right hand side um, until it reaches the 30 um, millimeter mark. Our next step is to check that the hangers are in the correct locations. Uh, so I'll move this so it's at a position of uh, 0.1 meter away. The second support I'll move so that it's at a position um, of uh, 30 uh, sorry, th 0 0.31 away from our support, um, basically uh, on top of this circular recess. And our third support I'll move uh, to a position which is um, 0.5 away from the left hand support. So I'll take my ruler, measure a distance of 0.5 and place the support at that position. Uh, once we've placed the hangers in the correct place, um, the next step is to check and ensure that our beam is parallel with the surface. Um, so to do this, uh, what we mean by parallel is um, instead of being at an angle, we can make it parallel with this surface at the, um, at the, bo at the base. Uh, so we do this using our eyes at this stage um, and we adjust um, the underslung spring to ensure that it's parallel. Uh, so that's roughly parallel. around about now. Uh, so you can use various strategies to ensure that it's parallel. Um, if you can, you can put a board or something similar in the back uh, which has a straight line which you can use as a reference. Um, the next step is to adjust the knob on top of the spring gauge um, until uh, both sides of our beam are collinear, are in line with one another. Um, so for example, the first step make sure that each of our sections are parallel with the surface and the second step is to ensure that they line up, that they're collinear. Right. So we'll adjust this knob
until the two uh, marks of the white sections line up with one another. So at this point I read a value off my spring gauge. At this point I want to remind you that the spring gauge is um, the most accurate reading you can get is uh, accurate to point as 5 of a newton. Um, there's an error of about 0.5 of a newton either way for each of our values. Um, so the value which we read here is 3 newtons um, plus or minus 0.5 of a newton. Alright, uh, so now we've got our reference uh, value. Um, while we're doing this, we need to check that our supports have not moved at all. So I'll just double check that they have not moved. Um, it appears that this has moved just a little bit. And our other component has stayed pretty much in the same place. Alright, and our next step is to place, uh, we recorded our value, our next step is to place weights onto our component according to the table which has been provided uh, to you. Um, so our first uh, location is a mass which needs to be placed uh, point 0.1 away from the left hand end and we need to place a 10 newton load. Uh, so we take our masses and we take a 10 newton load, uh, place it at the end which we would like to measure. Um, you'll see our setup will change, so the beam will change from being a collinear and parallel uh, to having some kind of uh, deformation. Now we will be adjusting our setup to go parallel and then uh, collinear again. So we will adjust the underslung spring. to make a parallel and then now adjust our um, spring gauge to obtain a new value of uh, shear force on our setup. Now we'll read off the value of shear force off our spring gauge and at this point we read a value of about uh, 2 newtons and we can record that value. Now we'll repeat this for all of the different weight combinations that are provided. Um, so at present uh, the next one would be um, taking our, our weight and moving the weight, um, up, sorry placing another 10 newton weight on our component um, at this left hand side. And we can repeat the process um, by adjusting the underslung spring and then by adjusting our, um, our spring gauge, our spring, how to measure our spring, our force. Uh, so we'll need to repeat this until all measurements are obtained. And if you have time, um, you can try to go through and do the experiment a second time just to try to reduce the effect of experimental error in your experiment and so that you can see where outliers are inside your experiment. Um, all right. Uh, so your next step will be to compare your experimental and theoretical results and we'll look at that in another video. Uh, thanks for your attention.